Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sports Band Z, Bob Zolke. And today, I'm doing the video that everybody's been waiting for. The comparison of the Chicago White Sox of 2020 to the 2020 Cleveland Indians. The team that's supposed to be on the downskids. But... Judging from this, they're not on the downskids just yet. Now, I had I was holding out. I was trying to wait until they traded away Lindor and until they traded away Clevenger, but so far they haven't done that. So we have to assume that they're willing to actually go into the season with Lindor and Clevenger on their team. Of all the crazy ideas. So... That's where we are. We got to compare them to what they got, and uh, so this is uh, this is what it's looking like. And um, as you can see, I got my usual White Sox lineup over here. You got Robert in center field because they signed him to a big extension, so now he's on the team. You got uh, Timmy Anderson at short, Johan Moncada at third. Abreu at first, um, and Canarcion at DH, who we also just signed in the offseason. Uh, Grandall at catcher, again, just signed him in the offseason. Um, Eloy Jimenez in left field. Uh, Nomar Mazzara for right, who we traded with the Texas Rangers to get. And then you got the Mendic Mandrigal connection at second. Mendic probably at the start of the season, right out of uh, spring training, and then Mandrigal when his clock will not start running for this year, and then they'll probably bring him up, assuming he's doing well enough in um, AAA. Until then, so that's probably what you're looking at right there. And then, of course, the rotation of Giolito, Keuchel, Lopez, Gonzalez, and Cease. Um, Kopech may factor into that, of course. Kopech may start in place of Lopez and Lopez in the bullpen. You don't know. And then you got Cordero, Calame, Bummer, Evan Marshall, Fulmer, Fry, Herrera, and Shisek, who we also just signed in the offseason. And then you've got the bench of Lurie Garcia, James McCann, Zach Collins, Adam Engel. And of course, I've been over this. If you want to go back and check out any of the other comparison videos that I've got, um, the um, and I will leave a link to that in the description. But, you know, they I've, I've been over all of this. Now, one notable thing that has happened fairly recently is that we uh, no longer have um, uh, Dylan Covey because he refused to take a uh, minor league assignment and wanted to go out and test um, his, you know, he wanted to take that, that 569 earned run average road show and see if he could get a job somewhere else. So good luck with that. Um, I don't know how much better off he would have been staying with the White Sox because, like, now we're really starting to really stockpile good arm, good young arms. So he may not have had any chance, really, of getting back onto the White Sox. So maybe it was all for the best, but you got to find a team that's really hard up for pitching. And then you really got to up your game if you're Dylan Covey. So, um, but other than what I've mentioned, because I have mentioned before in previous videos that Covey was a possibility for the bullpen, but now no longer, no. So this is uh, pretty much what we've got. Now, what's troubling is that this Cleveland lineup is, well, it's kind of formidable. I mean, if you take a look there, you've got Lindor at shortstop, and Lindor hit 284 last year with 34 or 32 home runs and an 854 OPS, and he's a shortstop. 
And then you got um, Mercado, who hit 269 with 15 home runs last year. And then Santana, who hit 281 with 34 home runs. When is that guy going to slow down? And he had a 911 OPS. I mean, I keep hoping he'll get old and, you know, just fall off a cliff. Well, I don't see the cliff anywhere. And then you got um, Ramirez at third, Framil Reyes in right field, and Reyes had 37 home runs last year and an 822 OPS. Um, Jake Bowers is a possibility at first base, um, but he doesn't have very impressive numbers. Um, some of what I saw had him possibly platooning with um, Jordan Luplau, but Luplau is probably better. Um, then you got Cesar Hernandez at second, Roberto Perez at catcher. Now, P Roberto Perez cannot hit very well, but he is one hell of a catcher. He's got a great arm, good at framing. He's an all-around great catcher. And then you got Delano DeShields Jr. for center field. So, uh, and then you got, and see, here's the problem. You got a rope rotation that's got at the top Clevenger, Bieber, and Carrasco. I mean, Clevenger was 13-4 and four with a 271 earned run average. Bieber was 15-8 and eight with a 328. Now, Carrasco was injured for a lot of last year. He only pitched about 80 innings. Uh, so he was only 6-7 and seven with a 529 earned run average. But you know when he's healthy, he's, he's pretty good. And then you got Savale, who uh, Aaron Savale, who was three and four with a 2.34 earned run average, did pitch a lot, but he's one of their good young pitchers, and he came up for a cup of coffee last year, and now I think he's going to stay and like raid the coffee shop. And then you got Playsack in the last spot. He's eight and six. He was eight and six with a 3.81 earned run average. Um, he's uh, actually Dan Playsack's um, nephew, I think, and he. Again, like Savale, is a young guy. He only was up for a little while. So uh, we'll see what happens there. And then you got a bullpen that's actually not too bad either. You got Brad Hand out there, who, like, people have been asking about Brad Hand, so he must be good. Then you got Nick Whitgren, uh, Chase, Adam Plutko, and Plutko can go back and forth between the rotation and the. Uh, and the bullpen, and he's not too bad. He's a pretty good pitcher. And then you got Adam Simber, and then Oliver Perez, and Hunter Wood. So this is not too bad of a bullpen, really. Um, and then you got a, uh, the bench of Lou Plow and possibly platooning with Bowers, but we'll see. And then you got Sandy Leone, another great defensive catcher that can't hit, backing up a defensive catcher that can't hit. And then you've got uh, Arroyo and Mike Freeman. So, you know, the bench is not that impressive. I think uh, if you compare our bench to theirs, we got a better bench. But once you start to look at everything else, I mean, the bullpen is... Our bullpen might be a little better. I, I'll say our bull, bullpen's a little better. But then you've got the rotation, and really the rotation is, I think at best, it's it's a draw for the rotation. And maybe, well, I guess it depends, because Savale and Playsack are both young guys, and young guys, they can go one way or the other. They can go, you know, anywhere. I mean, we haven't really seen enough of them to know that they're really good pitchers. So, that's a question. Although... It's the same deal with Cease. We haven't really seen... I mean, he was up for half the season last year, but he still didn't really pitch that much in that half a season. Um, so we'll have to see. So I think that the, the starting rotations are fairly comparable to each other. And then, of course, you've got the lineups, and the, and the Cleveland lineup is still very formidable. The Cleveland lineup, I think, is can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with ours. So, um, you know, I mean, looking at it, I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, Cleveland is still going to be, they're going to be out there. I mean, they're going to be someone to be reckoned with. 
So it's going to be pretty much the White Sox, the Twins, and Cleveland will be beating up on each other all summer long. And whoever comes out of that melee is going to be one of the, um, well, you know, whoever wins the Central is going to be one of the playoff teams. And then it remains to be seen if the other one, whoever finishes second, can get a, uh, a wild card. So, I mean, that's the, you know, it's by no means is this uh, going to be an easy chore because this is quite a team. Um, I, uh, yeah, I think I underestimated them. If you watch some of the earlier videos, I was writing Cleveland off and I really should not have been doing that because this team is a little better than I was thinking in the earlier videos. And it looks like they're just about like where we are. Now, the only thing I think it's in our favor is that some of those guys, like Lindor, like Clevenger, they could be losing them in a year or two. And they may trade them. They may try to get out in front of that and trade them to restock the, um, to restock the cabinet. Plus, you've got, um, you know, um, Santana who's winding down, although... And he's really a poor man's in Canarsion. So, you know, take that for what it is. And um, and then you got young, untested pitching. So, you know, there's there's a little, you know, there's a little leeway for us to get in there. But, um, and, you know, and our guys are young. They're locked up for years to come. So down the road, I think unquestionably, we're better down the road when you look, you know, in the out years. But when you look at 2020, I don't know. I mean, unless Cleveland does jettison a couple of their guys, it's going to be, it's going to be a long, it could be a long summer. But I want to know what everybody out there thinks. Do you think Cleveland is going to be a force to be reckoned with? Do you think we got them? You think we got them? Well, let me know in the comments. And uh, I look forward to hearing what everybody's got to say about it. But for right now, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.